today let us show you how to solve problems uh, in this area. That means, given the adequate data, how to calculate how much will be the power output of a wind turbine, uh, how much will be the thrust that will be experienced by the wind turbine, how to do that. But before doing that, I suppose we will need to refer to certain things. So, let us recall, recapitulate what we did in the last class. Uh, we said that let this be the velocity of the a wind v, let this be the linear speed of the uh, airfoil and then we will have to obtain the relative wind w and then there will be a force in the same direction as w that is f d and since all these are referring to blade elements rather than the whole blade, we will call it d f d and there will be one force perpendicular to it that will be what is it? D F L. Okay, and then the parallelogram again has to be completed to obtain the resultant force that is D F. Fine, and finally we obtain the different uh, forces that are meaningful to us by getting the projections onto these two coordinates. So, this was your uh, sorry this was your u, this was your u and this was your minus u. Hmm. So, in that direction uh, I will put the u as a shorter one, so that this is something different. So, here you have this particular force would be the moment producing force d f m and here this force this coordinate is your d f t that you have seen already. Hmm? So, this is the velocity uh, velocities and the forces as represented here and then we have seen that the these two forces d f l and d f d that comprise that actually make up all these other forces are given by d f l is equal to half rho d a b d a b because this is together because we are talking about a blade element and its area then w square then your c l the lift coefficient. Similarly, the drag force is equal to half rho d a b w square c d. So, these are the two forces that are produced, uh, rho is the density of air, d a b is the blade element that we are talking about. So, if we are thinking of a blade something like this, we will divide it into some elements and here we are talking about each of these blade elements. So, if consider that we are talking about this blade element, then d a b is this area okay. and when we talk about the w square, we are talking about this particular blade elements w square, which is not difficult to see that it will be different from element to element. Why? Because though v is the same, the u the linear speed at which it moves 
will be different. It will be smaller towards the inner edge, it will be larger towards the outer edge. So, uh, this is the shaft and this is the blade cell. And then we have seen that the, the forces, thrust force and the moment producing force, these are uh, the, these forces are written as, uh, it will be thrust force is uh, this angle is your I. Hmm. So, you have this as B F L cos I plus B F D sin I and we saw that the, the moment producing force is B F L sin I minus B F D cos I minus because when it comes to the moment producing force, this force is has a projection this, this side and this force has a projection that side. So, you have to subtract it and then we saw that this is the moment produced by this particular blade element and the power uh, the actually actual moment d m is r this distance is r r times d f m and the power is power is moment times the angular velocity. Okay. So, your omega times, so this was the essential uh, thing on the basis of which we do the calculation. Hmm. Okay. So, this is the omega times d m. So, when we actually want to calculate the power, we will put omega, then d f m will take all this and in place of d f m we substitute here, that is all. We will refer to this particular slide later. So, let us come to a problem. Uh, write down the problem. Hmm? Calculate the total thrust and aerodynamic power developed in a three blade <coughs> wind turbine uh, at a wind velocity. meters per second, the machine specs are as follows. Machine specs means what will you need? You will need the diameter. rotational speed hundred RPM blade length four meters tip speed ratio you have learnt about the tip speed ratio, the ratio between the, the wind speed 
and the tip of the uh, of the uh, the blade is 5.23 uh, cord length uh, assume that it is uniform through the blade. So, the blade is actually something like this. Uh, the cord is this and that is uniform through the blade. Later, we will learn that it is actually not made in that way, uh, but presently let us assume for the sake of simplicity that the cord length is uniform. Pitch angle five degree. Again, we assume that is uniform through the blade presently for solving the first problem. Later, we will see that it could also be variable. Uh, and the air force section now air force section as i told you uh, can be different kinds of uh, available air foil designs hmm? and many people have constructed such air foils with certain geometries and people have tested in wind tunnels and the data are made available. I will show you how the data are. Now, uh, say we are now using N A C A 23018 that is a, a particular airfoil. It goes by this particular name. Hmm? So, we will need to retrieve the data for this particular airfoil to obtain the results and the uh, shaft to inner edge okay first let us have have written down because i will have to move this and this will not be displayed when you actually solve the problem so you need to write it down so let us first understand the structure the construction of the blade it has a di it has a diameter of 4 meters which means it has a radius of 4.5 out of that the the distance from the shaft to the inner edge is 0 0.5 the actual blade is then 4 meters okay actual blade is 4 meters so it is like this you have got the shaft you have got the connecting shaft and then it is something like 4 meters straight blade okay now as i told you in order to solve such a problem we cannot take the whole blade together we have to break it up into blade elements hmm? so uh, given this kind of structure it will be convenient for us to break it up into four blade elements because it has a length of four meters so let us break it up into four blade elements of one meter each hmm. if we do so we will need to consider the midpoint of each blade element and what is the distance from the shaft to the midpoint of this one one meter what is the distance to this one two meters so it becomes convenient to handle the numbers that's why i did it did uh, break it that way so this distance is 1 meter distance distance is again 1 meter and so on and so forth good okay now one thing it has been said that the wind velocity of 9 meters per second this is the undisturbed wind velocity in our language it was v infinity hmm? so in order to calculate all these we will need to use v right we cannot use that vol that velocity so what is this v it is the velocity of the wind as it passes over the blade how much should it be yes right right we have seen earlier 
when we were we, we were calculating the uh, the maximum possible efficiency that is achievable we found that that is attained at uh, yeah beta is not necessary now it, it, it is clear that uh, the speed should be two third of the v infinity that is what is that follows from Bates theory. That calculation that we did was due to Bates and so it is called that limit 16 by 27 is called the Bates limit and the fact that the velocity of wind through the blade should be two thirds of the uh, undisturbed wind velocity also then follows from the Bates theory. So, we will say V is two third of 9 clear fine. Now, what is the area of each blade element? This side is 0 0.45 and this side is 1. So, D A B for all the blade sections would be 0 0.45 Now, what is the rotational speed? Hundred RPM is equal to hundred by sixty is equal to something like one point six six RPS. That's what we need. Huh? Clear. So, this much RPS. Now, in order to apply these, in order to apply these, what are the things that we really need? We need I. What is I? I is this angle, and that angle, this I, or say 10 I. Huh? What is this angle? This angle is also equal to this angle. Can you see that? This is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, so therefore this should be equal to that. So, it is the angle between U and W. So, that angle we need to calculate and that angle you can easily see it is, it is this angle I is 10 I is V by U, right. So, 10 inverse V by U is I. We will calculate it for each of the blade elements. So, first one I 1, we will keep the subscripts depending on which blade element we are considering. This is blade element 1, 2, 3, 4. How will we do this I 1? It will be 10 inverse of V by U. So, V is 6, we have already done that divided by U, U is the linear velocity of this based on so so how will you do that it is 2 pi uh, the, the the r so this in in this case it is 1 and 1.66 how much is this it is if you have a calculator you calculate else i have already done so so let me write it 29 point eight one. Similarly, you have to calculate it for all the other elements six by it will only be two pi into two. In this case the distance is two into one point six six is equal to fifteen point nine eight degree. I t is 10 inverse 6 by 2 pi 3 1.66 is equal to 10.81 degree and I 4 is 10 inverse 6 by 2 pi 4 to 1.66 is equal to 8.15. So, you notice that it varies quite a lot 
it varies quite a lot 29.81 almost 30 degrees to 8 degrees. Huh? So, this uh, construction of this one will vary quite a lot as you go from the inner edge to the outer edge. Good. So, we have calculated this. On the basis of that, we will not be able to calculate the, the C D and C L because we need to calculate C D and C L. We need to calculate C D and C L. And as I told you, the C D and C L are to be obtained from yes or air fall data. And the air fall data, how is it measured? It is measured by keeping the air foil in a air stream and then depending on the angle of attack, depending on the angle of attack, you measure how much is the, is the drag, how much is the lift. That is how you, you obtain it. So, in this case, it is dependent, it is available as a function of the angle of attack. Here, what do we have? Here, you have calculated the eyes, which are not the angle of attack, right? So, this angle is not the angle of attack. Angle of attack is, mm, no, this minus the pitch angle, because th this is what? This is the angle between the relative wind and the direction of rotation. We want to find out the, the angle between the actual position of the uh, actual angle with the relative wind and that is the angle of attack, clear. So, the actual position as, uh, as different from the, the, distinct, uh, the direction of the relative wind that is the angle of attack and that is what we need to calculate and we have calculated not that, we have calculated the I is capital I is which is the angle between this and that. So, we will need to subtract what is the angle of the chord. Say, if the chord is say at this angle, you have to subtract this angle in order to get the angle between the, the chord line and the relative wind. So, what was the, the pitch angle? I have already given in the problem 5 degrees. So, we have to subtract 5 degrees. Clear? So, so I, small i, the angle of attack is capital I minus the pitch angle and this gives I 1 is if you sub subtract you will get 24.81 degrees, I 2 is 10.98 degrees, I 3 is 5.81 degrees and I 4 is 3.15 degrees. Yes, now we will have to refer to the air fault data that is available. Hmm? Uh, this exercise I have already done. Hmm? So, I will, uh, this, these data are available in from form of I's and another column there would be for the C L, another column there will be C D. For each value of I, you can read off. And if the, your I is not exactly there, you have to in interpolate, that is all. So, uh, what we have found is C L 1, the first one is 0 0.95, C D 1 is 0 0.0105, C L 2 is 1.20, C D 2 is 0. 0143, CL3 is 0 0.75, CD3 is 0 0.0092, CL4 is 0 0.46, CL, CD4 is 0 0.0078. Notice the, the difference in the order of magnitude of these two quantities. Hmm? The C D is normally about a couple of order of magnitude smaller than C L. Hmm? So, after having obtained the angles of attack, these have been obtained from the data sheet. Hmm? That I have already done, so I have given you. How do we proceed after that? After that, we have actually everything that we need in order to proceed with the calculations. Hmm? 
what do you need it we needed omega we have we needed r we have for each of the blade element we needed in order to calculate dfm dfl dfd which you have so i i have here so we can go ahead with the calculation clear so how we will actually do it for the first blade element d p1 it will be let's let's write down the expression and then let's proceed uh, omega r d f l sin i minus d f d cos i and if you substitute you get omega r uh, d f l would be half rho d a b uh, w square these are two different things w square and yeah this will be common so it will be c l sin i minus And so we have all these we substitute. Clear? Can you do that? Simple stuff really. If you, if you do do that, that means you know for this for the particular blade element, first one, I we know, C D we know, C L we know, and the W we know. Uh, w is you know you you know i you know w huh? so so you can calculate everything and if you do so you get this one as 198.2 watts okay similarly for the other blade elements you can calculate in a similar manner and you you will get the p2 is 886.14 watts dpc is 1190.52 watts dp4 is 1213.38 watts so how much will be the total power add them up that will be the power produced by one blade and there are three blades so three times hmm. so total power if you do that you get in this case approximately 10 point uh, 466 watts or approximately equal to 10 kilowatts so this is how you calculate hmm. this is another important thing that you would like to calculate how much should be the strength of the tower that holds the whole wind turbine and that is dependent on the thrust that tries to topple the tower Hmm. and that is another engineering calculation one needs to do and so in that case how will you do that here we already have that huh? so again in this case you substitute this and you obtain this hmm. similarly uh, d f t 1 you understood how to do that so simply the relevant quantities for the specific blade element which is uh, we substitute and you obtain and then you will get in this particular case uh, 3 3.98 newtons similarly d f t 2 is 154.24 newtons D F uh, T three is 
212.94 Newton and B F C force is 229.96 Newtons. So, the total so F T is again 3 times times this uh, B F T 1 plus B F T T 2 plus B F T 3 plus B F T 4. Is it visible? Yes. It will come to be 1893.4 Newton. Notice a few things. The reason I actually wrote the results of the computation, I could have left it to you to be done. The reason is that Notice the amount of power produced by the inner side and the outer side, widely different. Hmm. The amount of thrust that is experienced by the inner side and the outer side, widely different. Hmm. And that is one of the reasons why uh, the blades tend to break, because the inner edge experiences a lesser thrust, outer edge experiences a bigger thrust, which means that there will be a bending stress. Uh, that bending stress tries to break it. Similarly, the torque produced, torque experienced by the inner edge and the torque produced by the outer edge are different. That is again something tries to break it. Since that is so, then how to how to avoid that? How to avoid that? Uh, no, the reason for the pitch angle variation is not that. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll come to but. Logically, in the expression you find that there is a term here, huh? d a b, can that be varied? Yes, that can be varied by changing the, the width of the blade from the inner edge to the outer edge, which means the, bit, the if, if the, the blade can be given a taper, then this problem can be avoided. Now, you might say that, okay, then in that case, I know how to do that. What I will do is, I will design so that all the, the power or the thrust or the torques experienced by all the elements would be the same. Then there will be no bending stress. Similarly, if you calculate it so that the, the, uh, the thrust are the same, in that case there will be no stress that way. But you will find that these two calculations will contradict each other. If you set at your, as your criterion that these should be equalized, then you will get one kind of uh, uh, taper and if you set this to be equalized, that means the, the, the thrust, you will get a different result. That is one problem. The other problem is that uh, in both these calculations, you will find because these are so hopelessly different, the width of the blade in the inner edge will be hopelessly larger than the, that in the outer edge the blade will look awkward. If you if you do it that way, then actually you will land up with a blade that is shaped something like this. Oh. So, this is somewhat awkward shaped blade. That is why nobody really does it. Hmm. What instead people do is, because of the uh, limitations of the manufacturing process, suppose we have understood that we can only make it like this. This much taper we can give, then we give that that much taper. But in that case, we know that the inner edge will experience a bigger torque and bigger thrust than the, uh, the sorry, le lesser torque and lesser thrust than the outer edge. So, accordingly, the strength has to be taken into account. That means, even if that kind of stress difference is produced, the blade will not break. Clear? So, so the, the actual calculation takes into account the strength of the blade, so that even with the maximum possible stress produced, and that has to be calculated this way, even with the maximum possible stress produced, it is not, it will not break. But you have understood that it is desirable to give a taper. Clear? 
it is also desirable to give a twist. Why? Uh, okay, I'll come to that issue uh, now in a in a slightly different context. What should actually be the logic be behind giving a different pitch angle to different places? Hmm? You just say that it will be it will be different. All right, it will be different. But why? Why and how much? Uh, in order to understand that, uh, let us proceed this way. What is the aerodynamic efficiency? Aerodynamic efficiency eta A is useful power extracted from the wind divided by the power supplied by the wind. Now, how much is the useful power extracted from the wind? It is u as a vector dot product with df. And how much is the power uh, supplied? That is v dot product df. Okay. And if you now forget about these dot products, we can write it as uh, u d f uh, m and v d f t right this is the in a dot product you will have to take a component so that component is d f m and this component is d f t so you can write it this way now substitute these values hmm? we have already learned what these values are just substitute them you will get u then we substitute the value d f l sin i minus d f d cos i divided by v d f t is d f l cos i plus d f d sin i. Okay. Now, divide both top and bottom by uh, by d f d no, sorry d f l uh, sin i. If you divide both top and bottom by d f l sin i, you get aerodynamic efficiency as <coughs> u by v, but this becomes 1 minus d f d by d f l cot i divided by cot i plus d f d by Now, in this uh, 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 in this diagram, in this diagram, this angle is called epsilon, hmm? which means epsilon is tan epsilon is dfd by dfl. Tan epsilon is dfd by dfl. Okay, so tan epsilon is this one. And if you substitute the values dfd by dfl, you will get simply the other things will cancel off. Okay, Because the coefficient of these are the same in the numerator as well as the denominator. So, you get this.
and what is u by z? There was a u by z here. What is u by z? No, cot i. Cot i. So, if you substitute this into this, uh, just do that. Substitute in place of this one, tan i, tan epsilon, and in place of this, cot i, and do a bit of uh, simple trigonometry, you will get eta a is Uh, in the first stage, we will write cot i 1 minus this is cot i no tan i tan epsilon cot i and here it is cot i plus tan epsilon. And then you just bring it in, you get 1 minus tan epsilon cot i 1 plus tan epsilon What is the purpose of all this? The purpose of all this is that we are trying to maximize this and we want to see very clearly um, any any person with a reasonably good mathematical intuition will see how this can be maximized. How can this be maximized? By minimizing tan epsilon because if tan epsilon becomes 0, what is the aerodynamic efficiency? 1. Okay. So, you cannot really bring it to 0. Why? If you do bring it to 0, look at this, tan epsilon being 0 means there is no DFD. That cannot be possible. But ultimately, we are trying to, we should be trying to reduce this. That also follows from common sense because tan epsilon is CD by CL. We should actually try to minimize CD and maximize CL. Hmm. So, that is also logically correct. So, ultimately, we are trying to uh, eta A goes to max when tan epsilon goes to min. How to minimize tan epsilon? That is the problem then. Hmm. Now, this, this fellow tan epsilon is essentially dependent on epsilon. Epsilon minimized means tan epsilon is also minimized. Epsilon has to be minimized. As I told you, uh, the data, okay, let me show you the data. Hmm. Uh, as I told you, they are available on the net. People have tested and th those things are right now available on the net. And right today, I have uh, logged into one of the sites and I have uh, brought in the data. See how it looks. Can you see? Yeah. Uh, probably you will also be able to see the, the, the site's location. It is UIUC, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign's site, in the specific site of Professor Michael Selig, M. Selig, uh, and you will have to do some search in order to get in here. Here, for example, it gives a, a, a the, the data for something like 1,500 different airfoils. It is a huge data set. So, let me just go to the first one. It is the airfoil A18, that is again some airfoil number. The way here we were doing it for NACA2, uh, uh, some number. Similarly, here it is A18. Uh, then it is available, this particular data was available or calculated at 40,000 Reynolds number. Uh, Reynolds number of 40,000. Now, remember one thing. For all these airfoils, you will find that the data are given for different Reynolds numbers. Out of that, which one will be important for us? The one that is at the least Reynolds number. Why? Because imagine a, the, the 
flight of aircraft which often flies at 20,000 feet. Huh? In, in that case, much rarefied at, at atmosphere, the density is much less, the speed is much more. So, the viscosity of air is less, the speed is more and therefore, that pertains to very high Reynolds number. Hmm? In, in case of a uh, electricity generation wind turbine, even though these are faster than the slow speed uh, water pumping wind turbines, these are not fast enough in comparison to the flow of air across it uh, as compared to that in the aircraft or the helicopter blades. So, obviously, in this case, the viscosity as compared to the speed will be larger, viscosity of air. As a result, it will be uh, or at, a, at a less uh, Reynolds number. So, as you, as you can see here, this particular airfoils characteristics were calculated for different Reynolds number and all these data are available now, huh? but we will look at the first one. As you can see, the alpha is given, in this case, it, it is the angle of attack really. Hmm? not our nomenclature, they are in their nomenclature, they are calling it alpha, but it is the angle of attack I for us. And C L, C D are given, these are not necessary for us, we only need this amount of data. So, the data for alpha versus C L versus C D, for every alpha we can plot the value of C L and we can get a graph. Hmm? And the graph would be of uh, this kind of structure. I will make it bigger. Okay, if you if you draw the C L versus I, it will get a curve like this, and if you draw the C D versus I, you will get a curve something like this. And when I say that all these data are read from the available data sheet, it is essentially for a given value of i, you, you find out what is the corresponding value of c d. But now, at the present moment, our problem is how to minimize i, small i, hmm? how to min so, no, not small i, epsilon. We are trying to minimize epsilon. What is epsilon? Epsilon is the angle. Is, 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 the, is the ratio between C D and C L. And here we have a graph for C D and C L both. All we need to do is to draw a graph C D versus C L. Okay. So, if you draw from this data a graph C D versus C L, you will get C D, C L, you will get something like this, say. Then how to find out what, what, what so say I take a point like this and what is the angle epsilon? C D versus C L, tan epsilon is this, okay. here is epsilon and that is what we are trying to minimize. What will you do? We will go for the tangent, right. We will go for the tangent. So, the moment we have identified the tangent, we have identified this particular point. And this point refers to a certain value of i. So, that is the value of i we have to take. You get the point? That is how we have to actually uh, go for the proper design. Now, one difficulty is there. As I told you, the C D is a couple of magnitudes less than the C L. As a result, this graph will be very close to like this and it will often be very difficult to draw. Okay. It will often be very difficult to draw. For many of the well designed airfoils, it is very difficult to draw. In that case, what you have to do is, from the data that I just showed, you just find out what is C D by C L and plot that versus I. You will get something like this. And the minimum point gives the right value of i. Clear? So, that should be the proper choice of angle of attack. And you have already seen that your i is capital I minus alpha. 
this is the pitch angle and this is the angle of incidence the angle that we we, we showed in the graph uh, where is that pitch here I have to refer to it all the time yeah here I is here. So, since you need to keep small i constant at this value, therefore, as capital I changes and you have seen that it changes by a large extent, you will have to also vary the alpha from the inner edge to the outer edge in such a way that the i becomes constant, right. If you do that, you will actually see that it needs a very large twist. You know, twist means a shear in the blade. Huh? The inner edge and the outer edge goes like this. It goes like this. To some extent, it is possible to do that to give that that kind of uh, uh, shear in the in the design itself, manufacturing process itself. So, to the extent that is possible, we do give, and accordingly, we make that. So, the blade is not just like this. It is like that. Uh, where this side has one angle and that side has another angle, the angles are different. Is that clear now? There is another problem that we will face when you actually try to solve problems the, like the way that I have given. What did you do? You had obtained the capital I's and then you had obtained the small i's depending on alpha. Now, if it is, is if it is a flat blade without any twist, if it is a flat blade without any twist, then what happens? Then all these, you, you subtract the same number from this in order to get i. As a result, the small i's will be widely different and the data you will find are available for only certain range from say minus 2 to in this case 12. It will go out of that range and you do not know the data then. There is another reason you need to actually give the twist. Is that clear? Yeah. So, when we act when we design the wind turbine rotors, we have to keep these in mind that a good well designed blade should have a taper, should have a twist. And in some cases, people additionally give a people additionally. Uh, consider the possibility that the airfoil section may not be the same throughout the blade. Inside it can be one airfoil section, the outside can be another airfoil section. So, these are also possibilities that people do consider. Okay. Now, how big will an wind turbine be? Big means the radius, the diameter. Hmm. You have to have some idea because nowadays we find wind turbines of the size of 1 megawatt, 2 megawatt, 3 megawatt, huge wind turbines now, now are available. So, also, also for the household, for the relatively smaller requirements, we also have the smaller wind turbines. What would be the size like? How do we calculate that? Simple. The power is equal to power will be equal to the power contained in wind times firstly the power coefficient C p times there will be one mechanical efficiency eta m and there will be one electrical efficiency eta e that will be the final power output. What have we done? First, we have taken the amount of power that was contained in the wind. Then we said that we will multiply with the power coefficient, which is the amount of aerodynamic power extracted. From that, we will we'll have to multiply by a factor that is the efficiency of the mechanical system, because there has to be the transmission, gearbox and stuff like that. And you will have to multiply the electrical efficiency. And we know that this term is given by half rho A v infinity cube fine then you will have all these terms c p eta m eta e a is area is in terms of diameter 
one fourth pi d square, right? So it will be one eighth rho pi d square v infinity cube again p p eta m eta e. Now, if you know the power, and if you know this, then you can find the uh, diameter. Okay. Suppose, suppose you have, uh, you are trying to design a one kilowatt wind turbine. Example, P is equal to one. Uh, sorry, uh, something like say four kilowatt. One kilowatt is too small. Uh, v infinity is say seven meters per second, a moderate wind speed. Uh, and mm, Cp, Cp's maximum would be 16 by 27, 0.59. Huh? So, let us assume that a reasonable number is 0 0.4. Hmm? Uh, eta m, let it be 0 0.9, eta e, let it be 0 0.95. Can you calculate? Can you calculate D? It will come out to be uh, eight point three meters approximately. Hmm. So, you know that in order to calculate, you have to obtain a, a power of something like 4 kilowatts, you need a diameter of 8.3 meters. 8.3 meters will be how big? Uh, bigger than this, the height of the room. Huh? How big will it be if you want to produce 1 megawatt? Use similar data. Huh? Use similar data and can you calculate? Make it 1 megawatt. there is a square here, it is not, not yeah, bec because it, there is a square here, you have to, you know, finally you have to take a root, so it does not scale. Ah, okay, yeah. So, it will be of the size approximately of a football field. Huh. So, that big would be the, the rotor diameter and uh, naturally the whole thing scales up, it is a huge thing. And often the, the problem of, of constructing such thing is the transport of such a big blade at least. You know. One thing you can say that if all these things are not given, very approximately you can say for a good uh, well designed uh, turbine, you can write it like this 0 0.2 d square v infinity cube, hmm, all these taken together. So, this is a, this is a very easy and quick way of calculating how much should be approximate size of the turbine. Okay, fine, let us stop, stop here now and we will continue in the next class.